وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور remember, just remember, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. Alhamdulillah, we've been looking in our previous episodes at the intent behind the names of Allah, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed these names to us, what value do they have in our lives uh, relative to Allah, relative to the world in which we exist. And we looked at the rules governing the names of Allah, how to understand them. And we looked at also how people have deviated in their understanding of these names, how they've ended up uh, giving Allah false names, giving Allah's names to His creatures. Uh, and now we began to look at the names as a whole and particularly the greatest name of Allah within them. We mentioned in the previous segment a particular incident which took place in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he heard one of his companions uh, make a supplication. And after hearing it, he said that this supplication contains the greatest name of Allah, which if a person calls on Allah with it, Allah answers his prayer. And if he requests of Allah with it, Allah gives him what he requests. And we said that scholars, in looking at this hadith and other hadiths which speak about the greatest name of Allah, have differed as to what in fact is the greatest name of Allah. The opinion held by a number of scholars, among them Ibn al-Qayyim and, and others, is that Allah, the name what was referred to as Lafzul Jalala, Allah, is in fact, the greatest name of Allah itself. And to support that, they brought uh, certain evidences. Why did they choose this as opposed to other names like Al-Hay, which Ibn, Al Ibn Taymiyyah chose, meaning the all-living? Why this particular name? Well, in the previous session, we looked at the first evidence, which was the na various narrations, various narrations which are uh, by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concerning the greatest name. And they, those narrations mention verses from the Quran and they mention uh, du'as what other people had made. When we bring them all together, we do find that the name common to all of them is Allah. The name common to all of them is Allah. It may be in the form of Allahumma, which means Ya Allah. That's calling out to Allah. It's, Allah is still there. Or the, the actual word itself, Allah. The second argument or evidence which is used is that it is the most mentioned name of Allah in the Quran. If we compare the number of times it is mentioned, 2,602 times, 
to even the nearest other name. Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim is mentioned 114 times. There, the difference is so vast. The next nearest name, Ar-Rahman, is mentioned 57 times. So obviously Allah has chosen this name and given it a special status over the others to have used it so many times more than any other of his names. So, that is the second argument. The third argument is the meaning itself. What does the name Allah mean? Actually, it incorporates all of the other names. All of the other divine names are incorporated. Their meanings are incorporated in the term Allah. So, it is the most general of all of the names of Allah. The fourth argument is relative to its usage, that this name has only been applied to God. It's the only name that has been applied to God and no one else. We don't hear of any people, even in the time of the ancient Arabs, prior to Revelation, etc. Nobody took this name. All of the other names, uh, people might take these names. But this name Allah has only been assigned to God alone. The fifth argument is the fact that other names of Allah are attributed to it and the name Allah is not attributed to other names. So you find, for example, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 180, which we said was the basic theme of this whole program in the names of Allah. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا The most beautiful names belong only to Allah, so call on Him with them. So, in this uh, verse, the, all the other names are referred to as the names of Allah. Similarly, even if you look at the Basmala, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, we talk about in the name of Allah, and then Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim are descriptive names of Allah. So always the names are attributed to Allah, and not Allah attributed to the other names. You don't hear of Ar-Rahman Allah, but you hear of Allah Ar-Rahman or Allah Ar-Rahim. The sixth argument or evidence is that in the verse in the Quran in which Allah chooses two names, two names to represent Himself, He said there, قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهِ أَوِ ادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Call on Allah or call on the Most Merciful. Now, He mentioned both of these two names. The one He mentioned first was Allah. Also, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in a well-known hadith had said, إِنَّ أَحَبَّ أَسْمَائِكُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَعَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ Again, if these two names, Allah and Ar-Rahman, are the most uh, prized or the, the, the greatest of the names, then naturally, the best name that a person could call himself is a servant of